We begin tonight with the Liberal government's major U-turn on its plan to ban certain weapons, dropping its controversial amendments on Bill C-21. Today's humiliating climb down that we have forced Trudeau to make is a temporary pause in his, his plan to ban hunting rifles. I don't know uh, what reasoning the Liberals ultimately had for these amendments, but I definitely will underline the incompetence part of it. The bill was originally designed to ban handguns, but the government introduced wide-sweeping amendments that critics argued unfairly targeted the Indigenous community, hunters and farmers. Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino says the government regrets the confusion caused by the amendments, but remains committed to putting forward a, quote, clear solution to ban assault-style weapons. He joins us now. Minister Mendicino, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start by asking you, can you admit you and your government got this wrong? Of course, we've got to accept uh, responsibility for where we are at in this process, and it is an emotional issue, and Canadians are depending on us to get this right. We introduced the amendments to Bill C-21 to complete the work on banning assault-style firearms, which were designed for the battlefield, have no place in our communities. Despite the laudability of that objective, uh, the amendments were withdrawn because we need to do more work to achieve consensus in a minority parliament. And so, yes, of course, uh, we've got to accept responsibility for that. But we're committed to uh, charting out a course in partnership with all parliamentarians, including opposition uh, colleagues. We want to uh, extend a branch. We want to reset the narrative uh, because we owe it to victims, survivors, gun owners, uh, First Nations and Indigenous peoples to get this right. Okay, you just said that uh, you need more consensus in a minority government. Would you have pushed forward with these amendments as if, as is if you had a majority? Well, I think what's important uh, for your viewers and all Canadians to know is that we're a government that listens. Uh, I'm engaging but, but, uh, with... But, but would, you, uh, would you have pushed ahead with the amendments as is if you had a majority? Well, as I was saying, um, regardless of whether or not we're in a majority or minority, we're always going to listen. And part of that is engaging with Canadians, no matter which constituency you represent. So as we have received feedback on the amendments specifically, uh, we've been listening. And my commitment to them is to integrate their lived experiences uh, into our legislative work, because the relationships that I have forged are too important. I've uh, sat down and grieved with families and, and those who have lost loved ones. I've met recently up in, in the north uh, with, with gun owners, and I try to base that, res uh, that relationship on respect and trust. So, of course, regardless, majority, minority, this is a government that listens, and we're going to do that work with all Canadians and bring them along. We owe it to them to get it right. So the reason I'm going to continue to ask about this is because Conservative leader Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are saying that what you're doing today, what your government doing today is a pause and that they are making the argument that if you, if the Liberal Party wins another majority in the next election, that you will push forward with these amendments. So my question to you, I'm looking for some clarity on this. If you didn't have to get consensus from opposition parties, would you have pushed ahead, as you say, more consensus in a minority government? Well, as I said the first time you asked the question, um, regardless, we're always going to listen and we're prepared to consult and to continue to consult to listen to people from every background. As I said, I've engaged with communities in rural and northern uh, Canada. We've engaged with First Nations and Indigenous peoples right across the country. And that is one of the principles upon which we do good legislative work. And those consultations have to be based on relationships, on trust and respect. And that doesn't change whether you've got a majority government or a minority government. And I would also say to my colleagues across the aisle, um, this step that we have taken today is about resetting the narrative, making sure that we extend a branch, knowing that we want to work with them, because we believe, at least with some parties, that we share a common cause to uh, get those guns which have been used in Porta Pick and True at Polytechnique and elsewhere off of our streets so that we can keep Canadians safe. And that is my, my commitment to them. So how did this go wrong? Well, look, I think that there will be uh, a lot of reflection about that. And certainly there needs to be diligence around the substance of the amendments. And we've gotten a lot of feedback on models and whether or not 
um, we need to take a, a second and a hard look at those models, and that's something that we're doing right now. We're going to support the committee's work on that. We also have to take a look at uh, the language in the evergreen definition to make sure we get it right. But I would say another equal part in this is consultation. And my commitment, the government's commitment, is to make sure that we are listening uh, with attention and sensitivity uh, to work across party lines so that we can get the right policies introduced, uh, support Canadians, so that uh, ultimately we protect them from, from gun violence. And that is something that I think we are all united behind. But certainly there must have been some reflection at some point already. You know, how, how did it get to the point where uh, today you guys have to pull back these amendments? How did it get to this point? Well, look, there's been a ton of reflection and there will be more of it. Um, but I am um, committed uh, to charting out a course forward and will remain accessible to uh, every opposition party and all parliamentarians to do this work uh, so that we can achieve um, the right focus. And the focus of the government is to target those guns which have been uh, used in mass killings and obviously to respect hunting uh, and uh, trapping and First Nations traditions, which is part of the fabric of the Canadian identity. And I think we can do that, uh, but it has to start with a relationship that is based on trust and respect and by engaging with Canadians, I believe that we can get there and that is how I see the chart, uh, the charted course forward. Where do you see that you can have some uh, commonality? W which opposition party do you think you can work with and find some commonality? And what does that look like? I'm all takers. I'll work with uh, any any party. And look, we've had some uh, good discussions uh, with 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 opposition parties. And look, there may be even some elements of uh, Bill C-21 which just for a moment, remember, includes a national handgun freeze and tools to go after organized criminals on which we may agree with conservatives on. So this is a government that is prepared to work with all parties. But at the end of the day, um, the only way you can do that is if you have good faith dialogue and that is and thoughtful debate that is based on facts, not fear or misinformation. And that is how we're going to move forward with this. And that is how ultimately I think we'll arrive at a good piece of legislation that will protect Canadians. Okay, so you, you want to have more conversations, you want to do more consultations. A big concern that we have heard from uh, both Indigenous people and hunters and sustainability hunters um, is that, uh, you know, there is concern that your government is going to end up, uh, whatever comes next, banning rifles that are commonly used by hunters. What kind of consultations will you be doing with hunters and, and do you intend to one day ban weapons that are commonly used by hunters? Um, that is not the intent. The, the intent is to go after the kinds of uh, assault style uh, firearms that were designed for a battlefield or for wartime or too dangerous for uh, for civilian purposes. And we have been engaging and will continue to engage with First Nations, Indigenous, Inuit and Métis peoples across the country uh, because uh, those traditions are, are woven into our legislation. Um, and we need to uh, continue to listen very carefully to them. And that is something that I've done uh, recent, most recently up in the north, both in person in Whitehorse, where I had a chance uh, to be out on the land along the Yukon River, along the uh, Dawson Overland Trail, uh, equally virtually last week in the Northwest Territories. Uh, that is work that we remain committed to doing so that we can do this work uh, consistent uh, with our uh, beliefs and values when it comes to reconciliation and bring all Canadians along. So what's a timeline here? When can we expect to see the next step in this? Well, I think what's important first is um, that we have a, 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 a conversation about completing the work when it uh, relates to assault style firearms that is rooted in trust and respect and good faith. And that's where I'm starting. And I think that's where our government needs to start. And again, to uh, extend a branch to our opposition colleagues to say, let's have this conversation in the right way. We owe it to victims and survivors. You know, I spoke this morning with uh, the, a community of, of victims and survivors who are quite anxious and rightfully so. Um, they don't want to lose um, the, 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 the goal behind this, these amendments. They don't want to lose the rest of Bill C-21. I think all Canadians are united behind this work. So let's start there and then we'll get into timelines. But obviously this work is very anxious and important and we're resolved to get it done. Uh, given that you are the public safety minister, uh, I don't want to miss an opportunity to ask you, um, are you uh, about this ongoing situation involving this Chinese surveillance balloon that has been spotted that apparently traveled over Canadian airspace and is now over the United States right now. Uh, I'm curious, were you and your office given any sort of heads up as to uh, what was going on? And can you walk us through when you first learned about this and if your office has been involved in dealing with this? 
Well, first, I get intelligence briefings all the time, but as uh, you've heard from uh, my colleague, Minister Anand, I want to assure Canadians that at all times we take the steps that are necessary to protect our sovereignty, our airspace, and our national security. And we will continue to be vigilant uh, about um, these developments and, and keep Canadians apprised. But the most important thing uh, that, that, that your viewers need to know and all Canadians uh, need to know is that uh, we have a national security apparatus that is in place that works 24-7 uh, to uh, guard against uh, any threat uh, from beyond and, and we'll continue to be vigilant on this. Uh, do you have any idea as to when it was first noticed or who noticed it and when it came to the government's attention? Well, I'll just uh, again reiterate uh, that we are always receiving intelligence reports uh, and we will continue to remain vigilant to protect our sovereignty, our airspace and our national security. We have a robust uh, apparatus and community of, of agencies and, and, and departments that, that remain on guard and, and we rest in con uh, remain in contact with them. Uh, but we're, we will continue to do what is necessary to protect Canadian interests. And just really quickly here, did China violate Canada's um, uh, sovereignty here by with, with this event? Well, look, um, we work very closely with all of our allies when it comes to protecting uh, our airspace, uh, the airspace of our, our allies on the continent and abroad. And I'll just again reiterate um, that we will um, always uh, defend the Canadian national interest. We will always do what is necessary to protect our national security and our sovereignty. And your viewers and Canadians need to know uh, that that is our top priority. Minister, I've taken way more of your time than I'm supposed to have today. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kitty. Refocusing our reaction to the development on guns today, let's get the opposition's take on the Liberal government's reversal. Dane Lloyd is a Conservative MP on the Public Safety Committee. Peter Julian is the NDP House Leader. Thank you both for coming into the studio to speak with us today. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, I'm going to start with you. Um, what is your reaction to what's happened with the Liberal decision to pull these amendments? Well, I think it's a sign of a significant defeat for the Liberals. Uh, the grassroots uh, swell of Canadians over the past number of weeks who have spoken out against this proposed ban-to-ban -ban hunting rifles and shotguns has been overwhelming. And, and for the government to pull this uh, key amendment at this time is, uh, is a sign that they're in trouble. Uh, Mr. Julian, what's your reaction? Uh, well, I don't think the government had a choice. They, they put forward an amendment that was so confusing and so badly done, so badly botched, uh, that it did two things. First, it sabotaged the principles of C-21. The handgun freeze, of course, we support in the NDP. That could have been through the House in December if we hadn't had this amendment uh, basically blow up all of the discussions around this. And so, as a result, the, the NDP put a lot of procedural pressure on the Liberals this week. As you know, uh, there was a, a, a going to be, ultimately, a referral from the committee to the Speaker. The Speaker would have been called upon to rule it, and it would have been ruled out of order as an out-of-scope amendment anyhow. So these amendments were, were doomed to go down. I think what the Liberals have done is basically done uh, the, the thing that they were forced to do by the NDP and take a step back so that there can be consideration now for the principle of the bill that, I, as I meant, mentioned, should have gone through in December. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, uh, you heard from Minister Mendicino there, and he says he wants to work with the opposition parties to come up with solutions, come up ideas. Is there any common ground you can find on this bill with the Liberals? Look, I think this bill is very misleading. I don't think it's going to achieve the public safety outcomes that this government has been claiming it's going to achieve. Uh, I think it's very disingenuous of the minister to say that they're listening and that they're open to consultation. We had Indigenous witnesses come to Bill C-20, uh, come to testify on Bill C-21 before these amendments were put forward, and they were saying loud and clear that this government had not consulted with them, was not listening to them, and then they still move forward with these amendments. And the government only listened when, when the people and the Conservatives forced them to listen uh, by fighting this uh, tooth and nail in the House of Commons. But he says right now that he, he wants to have a conversation now. Are you open to having a conversation about this? Um, everything's on the table. We're still looking at the bill. We have a number of meetings uh, that are open to consultation. Um, I, think, uh, I think there's room for some common sense amendments to uh, enhance public safety for Canadians, but uh, I'm very wary about these Liberals. I think, uh, I think if they had a majority, they would have pushed through this, these amendments uh, 
uh, they would have pushed through these amendments. Well, that's something we asked Minister about, <coughs> and, and Mr. Julian, do you think that this is something that, we, the way that uh, Minister Mendicino answered that question, I thought it prompted, uh, when we were asking him about uh, what went wrong and why it went wrong and how it went wrong, um, we were asking, uh, he, he talked about consultation, and he talked about how in a minority government you need more consultation. And so we put to him a number of times, I didn't think I got a clear answer on that, on whether they would have pushed ahead with the amendments on this if they did have that uh, majority government. You know, what do you make of, of, of where things go from here? Well, well, first off, I, I take issue with the idea that the Conservatives had anything to do with the withdrawal of the amendment. The Conservatives did not uh, lift a procedural finger through this whole battle. They were fundraising off it, but Pierre Polyev did absolutely nothing uh, to actually be the adults in the room and push back against the amendment, but also ensure that we have in place the freeze on handguns. And what's disturbing about this whole process, Katie, is that we had both the Liberals and Conservatives fundraising rather than doing the right thing and putting in place the kind of solid legislation that accomplishes the idea of freezing handguns. Uh, this, this is something I think that uh, the NDP has stepped up on. Jagmeet Singh and uh, Alistair McGregor, our critic, uh, were the adults in the room. We now have space, I think, to consider important issues. For example, ghost guns. We've seen in the United States a 1,000% rise in the use of these uh, untraceable ghost guns in crime. And so this should be something that all parties agree on, uh, that there should be some amendments that tackle that issue, which is uh, an issue for law enforcement and an issue of, of Canadians uh, that may be facing violence. This is something that hopefully all members of Parliament can agree to. But... The, the Liberals have to start consulting. They have to start discussing with other parties, and hopefully that's something that will happen moving forward from today. And I do take Lord exception with uh, what uh, Julian just said here, Mr. Julian. Uh, at the very beginning, when these amendments were put forward, the Conservatives called a vote. I called a vote on um, whether or not these amendments were in scope, and the NDP actually voted with the Liberals to rule that these amendments were in scope at the committee at that time. I will give it to them that at a later date, after weeks of Conservatives filibustering the bill without the NDP lifting a finger and speaking out against this bill at all, they did finally listen to their constituents across rural Canada and speak out against this bill. I do give credit to Alistair McGregor for doing that. They did put forward this amendment uh, to notice to seek the Speaker uh, to rule this out of scope, but they did vote that this was in scope at the very beginning of these amendments. And, and, and as Mr. Lloyd's aware, this is something that the Speaker decides, not the committee. So my, my point stands. The Conservatives did not lift a procedural finger in the House of Commons. They did not do any of the things that would have led to the result that we saw today. And you take issue with the party's fundraising off this. I, I see both Conservatives and Liberals fundraising off this when they should be thinking about public policy. This is, this is the, the important thing that I think is often forgotten by both of these parties, that we have to look at the public interest, we have to do the consultation, we have to make sure if an amendment is put forward, withdraw it when it's so badly botched that it is not going to do the job that it purports to do. And this is something that I think the government uh, forgot. Uh, hopefully today this will move forward in a, in a, in a, more, a, a more effective way. But also the Conservatives, rather, if they, if they say they're opposed to an amendment, do something about it. Don't just milk money from farmers and hunters, which is what they've been doing, fundraising for the last two months, rather than doing anything effective that would have actually forced the withdrawal of the amendment. Mr. Lloyd, your response to that? Well, we had no idea whether the NDP were actually going to support us on this critical motion. We waited for weeks before the NDP spoke out against it. And if Conservatives hadn't been filibustering this bill for weeks and weeks, uh, the NDP and the Bloc likely would have voted in support of these amendments, and we wouldn't be where we're at today. Not so true. That's if, simply not true. Well, we'll never know, because uh, they that didn't speak out about it in the first number of weeks. So uh, Conservatives fought this tooth and nail. Uh, we've been successful, but this isn't over. Uh, this isn't over. Uh, we know that the government, uh, if they get a majority or you know, they're going to come back possibly with a, uh, a new amendment or one, future legislation. One thing, I will, one thing I will bring up, that the Liberals did have a minority from 2015 to 2019 and they didn't do this. So uh, I know that we did have some legitimate questions to Minister Mendicino today about that. But do you really think that this is where this is headed if the Liberals, you know, is this just election posturing and trying to sort of get at fundraising here? Or what, what, is this a bigger picture uh, concern? This is uh, absolutely election posturing. It's, it's, there's very marginal effects on public safety. 
safety of, of these proposals that the Liberals are putting forward. These proposals are designed to divide Canadians between rural and urban, between gun owners and non-gun owners, hunters and non-hunters. It's purely uh, designed for political purposes to be used in an election to uh, scaremonger Canadians and to divide Canadians, not unite Canadians. Mr. Julian, do you take exception to that? Well, the, the handgun freeze is something that hopefully all Canadians can, can support. The reality is most of the mass shootings that we've seen have involved handguns. So that there is a, a very important public policy element the, to include, increase public, uh, public safety. Uh, no doubt about that. But I, I think the reality is we need to return to a calmer approach on this. We've had Liberals and Conservative fundraising off this rather than looking at the public policy, doing the consultation, and if an amendment is wrong, actually taking action to ensure that that amendment doesn't go through. Uh, and I think both parties, both the Liberals and Conservatives, have failed in, in this exercise. Hopefully, moving forward, uh, there will be uh, more ad adults in the room actually looking at public policy and the public interest. Do you think there needs to be more of a focus on policy here rather than fundraising, to Mr. Julian's point? Absolutely. Like, I've been focused on policy. I've been in the weeds, uh, like, in, in, the, you know, in the trenches on this Bill C-21 ever since it came out. Always trying to bring forward uh, common sense amendments, common sense ideas to the committee uh, to make this a better bill. And uh, unfortunately, I believe the Liberals, like this entire bill is designed as an election tactic. And, uh, and that's really unfortunate for all Canadians. All right, we're going to pause the conversation there. I want to thank you both for your time today. Thank you for coming in. Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Julian, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.